Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to have everyone here today as people are joining. Uh, please go ahead and feel free to introduce yourself and put your name, your LinkedIn profile, maybe where you're calling in from in the chat. Um, we also have a questions tab. So if you have any questions for Liz throughout the um, remainder of our time together, please feel free to put those in the questions chat, chat uh, tab as opposed to the chat tab. Um, that will help us kind of sort out which are actual questions. Um, and yeah, feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat. We're going to go ahead and get started. So um, if you're here today, you know that this is a webinar co-hosted between Talent Collective and Ashby. I wanted to give a huge, huge thank you to Ashby and Liz for their time and for hosting this amazing webinar. Um, I know personally, selfishly, I've been excited to see Liz in action. She has a background in research and sourcing. Um, I know I've been frustrated in the past by having an ATS that's full of candidates, but no real easy way to find them. Um, and these are people that have usually applied to your company. So they're warm leads. They're people that are excited about working at your company. So I'm uh, really excited to, to hear from Liz today. So thank you again to Liz and Ashby. Um, so uh, just to kind of go over, you know, a brief review of, of what will be covered today. So Liz is going to show us how she sources, um, but she's also going to go over the theory and the benefits of sourcing in your ATS. Um, but then she'll also be showing us a demo, so she'll be screen sharing. There also will be a Q&A at the end. If any of the questions are relevant throughout, um, I may try to just sprinkle those in at the time the question's being asked. Um, however, we may hold some of those questions till the very end. If we can't answer your question, we will have record of those and we'll try to follow up with you after the fact. Um, but again, if everyone wants to put their name, LinkedIn profile, where you're calling from in the chat, that'd be great. And then the questions that you have, you can put into the questions tab. So i um, excited to be here with you all. Um, also, everyone always wants to know, will a recorder, recording being sent out afterwards? So yes, Ashby will be sending out a follow-up email with a recording after this. Um, also, quick uh, overview on Talent Collective. So I'm one of the co-founders of Talent Collective. My name is Krista Tan, and Talent Collective is a community for women in the talent acquisition space. So if you're interested in getting involved or hearing more about what we do, you can follow us on LinkedIn. Um, you can also book time with me directly. We'd love to share more with you. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to pass it over to Liz. Liz, we'd love an introduction on yourself and to hear a little bit more about you, and then you can take it away. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, Krista. Um, so I am here in Austin, and I, I think you guys actually recently launched a chapter in Austin, which is exciting. Um, I, uh, I work at Ashby. I'm on the talent team uh, prime, as a sourcer. Um, I do have uh, many years experience in sourcing and recruiting in general, about nine years at this point. Um, I was at Google for several years. I also did some learning and development as a program manager there. Um, I have sourced across roles, engineering, marketing, go to market, sales, you name it. I've worked on it at some point. Uh, and I also did some time in executive search as well. Um, love all the introductions that are in the chat right now. It's great to kind of see who's here and, and who we're talking to. Um, but yeah, excited to talk a little bit about, um, you know, thinking about sourcing within the ATS. Uh, I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Also, real quick, just to highlight, there is a poll in the polls tab, so feel free to vote on that, and we'll share the results later on. Yes. I am going to make sure that I'm sharing the right thing here, because I want you guys to be able to see the different... Can you see <clears throat> the presentation tab, Krista? Uh, I think you need to hit slideshow, and then we'll be good. Oh, wait. Um, can you see it now? Yes, perfect. OK, perfect. Um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about leveraging ATS data um, for sourcing efforts. Um, and then going to talk through some uh, use cases, um, how I kind of go about it as well, but wanted to just kind of start with like strategy. Um, so first of all, why do it, right? Um, I think most of us probably 
know that it's a good thing to do, um, but maybe we're not entirely sure how to go about it or what what's some creative ways to kind of utilize the ATS. But essentially, you want to be able to develop long term relationships with talent. Um, you know, it's those long term relationships that's really going to help you fill roles in the future, having that, you know, longer term uh, mindset versus just trying to fill the role today. Um, utilizing the data on candidates that you already have, ATSs are can be such a wealth of data for us to, to utilize versus always trying to spin our wheels, trying to find new people. Um, and then you can rediscover people at the right time in their career, <clears throat> whether they've interviewed with your company in the past and it just wasn't the right time, or whether you sourced them, but maybe they're a little bit too junior, or you wanna see some additional experience before you engage and interview, it allows you to be able to go back and resurface those people at the right time for them and for your roles in your company as well. Um, and finally, you know, you don't wanna burn through the talent pool. I know that this is probably something that's not on a lot of people's minds because you're like, there's so many people in the world, there's so many talented people, depending on the role that you're trying to fill, depending on maybe the size of your company, like, you know, if you've been on a sourcing team of 20, 30, 40 people, you can actually kind of start to run out of talent pool. It's, it's actually a thing. And you want to make sure that you're not doing that because then you're just kind of finding the same people over and over. And you want to make sure you're developing those long term relationships and getting people into your interview process at the right time. So those are some some kind of uh, things to think about um, why to source in your ATS. So thinking about strategy and execution, um, you know, really think about the kinds of data that you have at your disposal and how what the best way is to utilize that for your strategic uh, you know, plan. So whether you're looking at past interview scores, um, new, new job titles, tags, think about the ways that you can utilize that specific data to make sure that you're resurfacing the right people at the right time. Um, and then make a plan of action for identifying them, engaging them, and interviewing, right? So it's not just about sending an email and saying, hey, what's up? We liked you when we interviewed you six months ago. Looks like you've gotten some more experience, right? You want to have kind of a plan of action so that, first of all, you can automate as much as possible so you're not just manually having to go in and do this on a regular basis. Um, but also make sure that there's, you know, some structure to the plan as well. There's a certain cadence of continued outreach. There's a certain timeline. You know that if you interview somebody and they're a near miss, when do you re-engage? Is it six months? Is it 12 months? Is it 18 months? Um, so having a kind of plan in place to, to really give some structure to it. Um, and then third, mapping out the talent according to your hiring needs and organizing it. I can't stress enough how important it is to have some kind of organization within your ATS. And if the ATS is built well, that should be baked in, right? So whether it's grouping people in projects, whether it's um, you know automatically adding to sequences, whatever that might look like, uh, make sure that you have some kind of uh, you know structure organization in place. And then finally, communicating that plan and its execution to any stakeholders that are going to participate, right? So we know that recruiting just like raising a kid is it's a community effort you know you need you it's a group effort there's a lot of people that are participating whether it's hiring managers that maybe want to customize outreach um if it's you know a nurture campaign like you know hey we just in ashby's example we just raised our series c what have you been up to we're high we're growing you know blah 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 um or whether it's uh interviewers that are going to be tagging near misses in the moment they get out of the interview they're like gosh i don't think that this person is right right now, but they're, they could be fantastic in, in the future, right? Um, so making sure that you're engaging and communicating that strategy to the different people that are gonna be participating in the effort. <clears throat> um, and then categories of data to consider. So thinking about the different types of data that your ATS holds. So that could be location, if it's relevant, it could be job titles, past interview scores, um, tagging, I'm a huge fan of tagging, um, it just makes, candidates so easy to resurface. Um, there's also nurture or top prospect, and I'll, I'll kind of show where that lives within Ashby in a little bit. Um, big fan of those as well, so easy. Um, and then, you know, whether you're looking at target companies, you can search that way, um, events attendance or community participation, and then finally sourcing forms, which I'm also a huge fan of. We'll kind of touch on that a bit later as well. Um, cool, and so we can go ahead into the uh, ATS. Um, just want to confirm, can you see my Ashby screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, pause, any questions? Because I haven't been looking at the chat or anything. Nothing yet. No, we're, we're good. good. Okay. Thanks. So. Cool. So uh, we're going to start kind of basic, you know, how to, how to source uh, within your ATS. 
So for this, we would go to candidates search. Um, and we have, um, and by the way, this is a demo instance, so this is not real data that we're looking at here, um, uh, just for the purposes of, of kind of demoing. Um, so let's say, for example, you are a campus recruiting team. You primarily recruit new grads or interns, and a lot of your, rec your sourcing recruiting efforts are based around campus events, right? So let's say, for example, you want to uh, search for um, hiring event name. I know I can do the AI assistant here. Um, yes, this is what, so like this, I typed this in last night. And so I can go ahead and just, it's right there ready for me since I typed it in last night. I click um, generate filter. And this is going to pull up all the people who, it'll show it in just a second. Um, candidates event audience member RSVP status equals attending. So these are all the people who had, it's not very many because this is a demo instance, but people who had attended a specific event. So if you have an event um, in your uh, ATS, which we do, we would have them here. Um, and you have people that have RSVP'd, um, you can easily get them into a project. You just click select all, add to project, or you could set a bulk set a tag for these people, or you could directly enroll them in a sequence to engage. Um, so that's just one example. Another, uh, if we were to go to, um, let's say, job is account executive for platforms, for example. Um, let's say, so we've got 919, and then we want to do average overall recommendation. Uh, let's see where that would be. Average overall recommendation, we want to say, since we're on a four point scale, we want to go between two and four, for example, apply. So this takes the average of all the interviews that they have done in the past with you. Um, and we say it averages out to between two and four. We could change that if we want to be more strict between three and four. That goes from 292 down to 108. Um, so this is just an easy way to do it. You could also use the AI assistant in this case and actually would do it a lot easier. So, uh, so let's say I type this in as well. Candidates who interviewed for sales roles in the last year and got an interview score of three or better. So we could just generate that filter. Oh, because I didn't delete the other one first. Get, that, get out of that one. Okay, so we're back to the original. So then I would do three or better, generate filter. And instead of 108, now we're going to have, dun, dun, dun. It's scanning. Now we have, ah. 82. Um, and the difference there is because we're saying they had a three or better score, whereas the previous one was taking the average. So if you think about what specifically you're trying to target, if you want the average, if you want somebody who had an individual score of three or better or two or better, whatever that might be, um, then you would kind of you know play around with it and figure out the best way to, to surface that. Um, let's say, for example, we want to do engineering. Um, so again, I could do the AI assistant here. Uh, candidates who are tagged as very senior for engineering. It's just another specific use case. And that takes us down to 400 in this instance. So then we could, again, select all, consider for job, add to project, whatever we, we might want to do as a bulk action there. Um, so I'm a big fan of the AI here. Um, it just kind of makes everything a lot easier to do. Um, and you can you know action those, those leads right, right here. So you don't have to click anywhere else in order to do it. Um, wanted to go to sourcing forms. Um, so we'll get out of this and go, let's see, I can click into sourcing forms are here. Liz, can I ask a quick question? I think it might, might be relevant at this point. If not, we can answer it later. Um, but Bethany had asked, can you filter by removing some fields like you do not want to see candidates in the hired stage? Yes, let's do that. So for what kind of role? Um, there's no specifics. Okay. Candidates who are not in the hired stage for sales. Let's just do that and see what we got. Yep. Quite a few. Um, so out of, well, out of, uh, the 5,000 plus, um, it sounds like a lot of them have been hired in this uh, demo instance, but um, these would be all the ones who are not for a sales related role. Thank you. Yep. Um, cool. So I'll go to forms. It prompts me to 
Um, okay, so this is where we can create sourcing forms. So the main idea about, and I like to go to Ashby University because I think it's actually a really good um, explanation of this. Um, the primary kind of obvious sort of use case for sourcing forms is to capture people that you don't necessarily have a role for them at that time. Like maybe you met them out in the wild at an event or something and um, you think they're great, but you're not hiring for what they do at that time. You can easily capture their information, their interest. There's a lot of automation that's built into this. So like depending on how the person fills out the form, it could automatic, you can configure it so that it autom let's say they say they're interested in engineering roles, it automatically puts them into a project for future engineering candidates that you've created. Or let's say, um, you know, they might be interested in considering a new opportunity um, one year from now, you can create a project and it automatically puts them into that project so that you get notified um, and you can set up alerts and that sort of thing for projects, which I do all the time. It's really, really cool functionality so that you automatically get a notification when it's time to re-engage that person. Um, you don't just have to remember, you don't have to have like a massive spreadsheet with all the timelines and everything. It's it's The automation is really baked into the system here. Um, but what I also like sourcing forms for is I think you can also use them to re-engage people that you've already interviewed. So let's say, for example, somebody goes through the interview process, they do one interview or two, or maybe they get to on-site and you're like, you know what, you're a really strong candidate, but we have another finalist that is just edged out and we're gonna extend an offer to them. Um, you really like them, they really liked you, they had a great experience in the interview process. You can send them a form for, you know, when would you like for us to re-engage? We think you could be really great for the future as our team grows. Or let's say, for example, we thought you were a very uh, strong candidate, but maybe, you know, hire number 10 for the team, not hire number two. So when we do get bigger as a team, is it okay for us to follow up with you and see if it might be better timing to, you know, to interview for the role again or reconsider the opportunity? And sourcing forms is a way that you can do that. It's kind of like, um, you know, how you might otherwise kind of have a nurture campaign or follow up with people, except in this case, you're just getting their consent and that's always a good thing. So um, then they can opt in and say, yeah, for sure. You know, this is a great interview experience. Would love to consider uh, opportunities in the future. Um, uh, so that's what I like about sourcing forms. There's definitely a lot more to get into here. And if anybody's interested, they can go to Ashby University and kind of watch the video about how to set up the configuration for the automations and things like that. Um, I'll get out of this. And then uh, finally, I know we're kind of moving pretty quickly here, but wanted to get into some more granular use cases um, for searching candidates as well. Um, so, you know, one of the things that for example, in my time at uh, working in executive search, one of the big things that, because you know, executive search, you're really looking for um, high-level senior executives, and one of the things is where they are in their career. You know, maybe you find them when they're a director of marketing. You know that you're looking for a VP of marketing, or maybe you will be hiring a VP of marketing later this year, but you want to be able to find that person when they get the new title, when they get promoted into a VP role or when they get hired into a VP role at a new company and they've got some of that experience under their feet. Um, there's actually a way you can do that within uh, Ashby, Ashby Search. Um, so you can actually put job title refreshed at. Um, you can do held job title um, and that'll uh, scan their, uh, their background if they've ever had that job title. So maybe you're looking for a solutions engineer. Maybe they've had that job title in the past. They'd have something slightly different now, but they're still, their experience is still relevant. Um, but you could also do job title refresh at um, or refresh within the last year. <clears throat> and then that way you can set up specifically, you know, what you want that to be. So maybe it's um, maybe the job title is, you know, a VP of marketing, maybe it's a director of engineering, whatever that might be, um, you can kind of filter that way. Um, so that'll surface people that have had um, a promotion recently that gets them into the seniority that you're looking for, for example. Um, another thing that I really- Ms. Can I ask a quick question on that? Yeah, sorry? Can I ask a quick, quick question on that? Um, and you may have answered this, but where is that data pulling from that it got refreshed? Yeah, so let me go into um, a profile and see if I can find a good one. Um, so we have within Ashby, I don't know if any of these demo profiles will have it, but there is data refresh. Um, and 
I don't know if uh, I should have found like a good example for this, thinking that the question would come up, but it would show up over here in the right hand column in the feed. Um, you would see like um, data refreshed at date. And then you would see like the list of like the previous held titles, new titles, companies, that kind of thing. Um, that's where it would be. Mm -hmm. But it would be. And then good. like, how does Ashby know that their title was refreshed? Is that like pulling from LinkedIn or some other data source? Yeah, it pulls from LinkedIn. Um, and so as far as I'm like 95% sure, um, it pulls from LinkedIn um, and it automatically uh, refreshes that information. Okay, awesome. That's a great feature. Um, and then I'll go into a, a profile to show where nurture and top prospect live. So those, this was, this one has a lot going on. There's a lot of tags, there's a lot of previous roles. Um, but uh, if you're looking for the nurture or top prospect functionality, that's going to be in summary. And if you scroll down, um, this one has, it's gonna be down here. So you have like willing to relocate and you can also search these, um, this data as well, needs visa. Um, if you know that you cannot do visa sponsorship, you can search for that as well. Extra notes, check back in a month. Um, you can click on, where is it? Is it in this one? I think these are relatively recent additions for nurture and top prospect. I don't know if it's in this demo instance. Um, let's see, under summary. Yeah, it looks like it has, this demo instance was probably several months old, um, but it would be down here. You would see a, a, a checkbox for nurture, um, and then there's another one for top prospect, and you can search those as well. So you could say like interviewed for enterprise account executive platforms, and it, uh, nurture is yes, or top prospect is yes. Um, and then you can pull up those people, put them into a project and, and get them re-engaged as well. So my apologies that it's not showing up here, but it is in Ashby currently. I, I've started using it myself. Um, cool, so that's basically, um, I think that's all that I wanted to kind of show today. Um, oh, one final thing. So you can also use this search functionality within your active pipeline for people that have applied. So let's say we go to um, dashboard, go to a role that has a lot of applications. So we're looking here at application review. Um, we can do the same thing here. So let's say um, is in the United States and does not require visa sponsorship. It can generate the filter um, and that will pull up the people that are currently in the, in the US and that don't require visa sponsorship. Again, this is not, and I don't wanna feed into the myth that you know the AI or the ATS is like filtering people out that never get reviewed. This is made mostly just to surface the you know, spot on um, talent pool that you know you're really, you know, with, that meets the, the needs of the role itself. So that could be, has a certain number of years experience or it could be doesn't require visa sponsorship. It could be whatever that might be that are, you know, your, your spot on profiles are gonna match um, and review those first, get them into profile. You know, they're, they're your, you know, kind of top profiles based on that and then go back and, and review all the other ones as well. So it's not like about filtering people out that they never get seen. It's just about being able to search within your applicant pool and surface the people that you know have the greatest likelihood of meeting the, you know, the requirements for the role. So that's another functionality that works really cool here as well. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, I've gotten a question from Melissa. Um, looks like she's in Ashby currently. She's a user. She says she's not seeing the AI assistant in her version. Do you know when it's going to be rolled out to everybody? I do not know that. I actually did not realize that, that not everybody has it. Um, I've become so reliant on it. I use it daily myself um, just because I find it so much easier than like searching for the different um, categories. So I think that's a good one where we can follow up um, in terms of when that's going to be more, rolled out more widely because it definitely is a great feature. Awesome. I have a personal question. Well, not personal, professional, obviously. <laughs> Um, but I have a question that I'm curious about. So you mentioned tags and you've mentioned projects. What's the difference between them and how do you use both, both of them? 
Yeah, so um, tags is basically what it sounds like. You're putting a tag on a person's profile that you can then search and sort. So basically, let's say um, there's one, you, you can create whatever tags you want in Ashby, but um, we have one that's silver medalist. So they were the second person that, you know, if the first person had declined the offer, you, the offer would have gone to them. Maybe you want to re-engage in the future. Um, the, as we saw earlier, very senior. There's a very senior tag. You can tag people as um, by location, um, whatever you want to add to, you're basically adding that data to the person's profile that you can then, um, uh, yeah, I see the question someone's asking me to share. So I'll share my screen again. Um, uh, and then uh, you can search that basically. Um, go back into mm -hmm. it. Okay, so back into here, let's go into a profile. Um, let's just say this person. So this is where your tags are gonna show up. Um, very senior, keep warm. You can easily X out of them to make them disappear. If there's a bunch of tags, you can um, <clears throat> see them here, a list. You could also add others, manage tags. So this is basically just data that you're attaching to this person's profile that makes it, that then is searchable. Um, and if you were to manage tags, here's all the candidate tags that you have within this demo instance that somebody has populated here, yours would look different depending on what tag, depending on what tags you have. It would show the number of candidates with that tag. Um, so like engineering event, 912, keep warm, needs visa, et cetera. Um, but yeah, basically that's where it's gonna live um, in the person's profile. Um, for, okay. pro was there another question, follow-up question to that? No. Um, just confirming, which I think it's a yes, but those tags are customizable per the company, right? 100%. Yeah, whatever tags you want to put in there. I don't know if Ashby comes with like a set of like recommended tags that are already pre-populated. It might, it might not, I don't know. But you can easily just add a new tag. Just click new, put in your tag, what you want it to be called. So let's say, um, um, I'll just put qualified. Okay, and then we create that and boom, there's my new tag. Uh, no, nobody yet has it. Um, cool. And then the answer about projects. So projects is um, also what it sounds like. This are basically places to house leads. So an example of when I would use projects, um, let's say, you know, a uh, hiring manager says, I'm going to be hiring for this role. Um, it's not opened yet in the ATS. It's not in Ashby yet. Um, but I know that I'm, I'm going to be sourcing for that role. What I will do, I don't have anywhere to put them yet because the role hasn't been created yet. But so, so I'll just create a project and I'll put them in a project. And that way it'll be a place to house these candidates. And from the project, you can do lots of things. You can manually add them. You can select all, consider for a job, which makes it really easy because once the role is open, then you just easily click into the project, select all, consider for the job. Boom, they're already in there. All your new leads will populate. Um, you can also just, uh, you can remove from the project, you could bulk set tags here, um, uh, or you could enroll directly into a sequence, whatever you wanna do. But a project is basically just a place for leads to be housed. Um, related to our you know, ongoing engagement example, um, you can have a project um, <clears throat> that uh, people get automatically populated into. Let's say if they fill out a sourcing form and they say, I'd like to be, you know, considered for future future marketing opportunities for your company, you can have a project created where the automation configuration within that um, sourcing form automatically puts people who fill that out into that project. And that way it's holding them there so that you can um, re-engage whenever the time is right. Um, but yeah, I like projects. There's a lot you can do with them. A lot of automations that can be set up if it's within Ashby specifically. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And we have another question from James. Uh, so what are your best practices for tracking or tagging in a candidate's records that have more than one email that has an email that bounced or was undeliverable? So maybe it's not a tag, but maybe what are the best practices on emails when there's multiple and then that either gets bounced or it's undeliverable? Yeah, I mean, if it's bounced, if it bounces or it's undeliverable, I, you know, I just delete it from the system right away. Um, so like, for example, if we see, um, you know, down here, I think summary, um, Jimmy J at example, 
Uh, if there's multiple email addresses and the one that gets used is bounces, same thing as sometimes it pulls multiple um, LinkedIn profiles. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why that happens, but sometimes if, occasionally there will be, you know, multiple, maybe they had like old LinkedIn profiles that are like de deactivated and they've got like a new one or something. Um, then I would just delete it right away. Uh, as far as best practices, you know, I would say, I tend to prefer personal emails. If you've got both um, work email and a personal email, I think a lot of people like to kind of keep things separate. If you're being recruited, you don't necessarily want that to show up in your work inbox. Um, um, that's just me, but you know, each person kind of has their own preference. Um, but as far as like deleting or, or uh, bouncing or undeliverable, I would, I would just delete those right away. Hopefully that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's, typing. Um, so if Ashby finds an email that is bad, I think he's typing more, <laughs> would you delete it? Yes. If it's, if it's an incorrect. Delete, so if Ashby, yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's, yeah, if it's, uh, if it's undeliverable, if it's not, a, if it's not like sometimes, sometimes in, um, uh, cause Ashby will pull up, like, let's say for example, if I go to, um, I don't know if I want, if I'm like showing too many, too much information here, but actually, you know, I don't, I don't think it'll show up right away. But um, if you go into the Ashby sourcing Chrome extension and you go into somebody's profile on LinkedIn and you add to Ashby, if they've got like multiple different email addresses, you'll see them listed. I've seen people that have like up to five or six email addresses associated with their LinkedIn account. Mm -hmm. um, not all of those are going to be up to date. Some of them you'll see it's like an alias from the university that they went to 10 years ago, or it's an alias for their previous company, if it's like at company name, um, you know, if that's the case, then definitely use the one that looks like the most up to date. If it's their current company alias, or you know, if it looks like it's not like you know some really old email alias like that nobody uses anymore. I don't want to diss any aliases by naming them, but you know, you know, you get you get a sense of like what's probably an older email address versus what's probably a newer one. So I would just go with you know the, the ones that seem most likely to be successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we just got another question from Melanie. Thank you, Melanie. So curious best ways to find diverse candidates with Ashby if you are capturing that during the application process. Yeah, so within, um, let me go back. Yeah, so we're back at the original. Um, you can search, uh, I think is it, I think it's, I think that's what it's called. If you have it set up, which you can do in Ashby, I don't think that's the right way to pull it up. Um, I have not, my apologies, I have not uh, searched this specific thing before, but I know that there is, you can set up so that that um, information that the candidate fills it out when they apply for the role, that information gets populated into their profile in Ashby and that is searchable. Um, my apologies, I can't seem to pull it up right now. Let me see. These, um, I don't know if it's the demo instance, this looks different than what I see when I'm doing it. That's why it's kind of like a little bit clunky for me right now. Um, Cause it actually looks different when I'm, when I'm doing it in my own um, account. Uh, you can see what, the, and these are just suggestions. Let's see if, let's see, no. Um, I know that it's in there. I'm just not entirely sure how to find it, um, but I have seen it before. Trying to think what else that might be. Yeah, it is the EEOC. I'm I'm calling that right, right? If anyone can chime in, I believe that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it does. It's not. It doesn't seem to be in this demo instance. But that information does live within the ATS if you have it set up that people are prompted to fill out that information when they submit an application and apply. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't see any more questions yet, but I'll ask another one. Um, mm -hmm. And if anyone does have more, please put them in the mm -hmm. questions tab. Um, so I've never used the sourcing forms before, and I was a little, and pardon my ignorance, but I was a little bit confused. So um, is this something that you're sending? You're sending the form to all candidates that you interview or that have applied, or how does that all work? Like straight from the start if you don't know what a sourcing form is. Yeah, so you can set it up however you want. So you've got, you can configure the form itself and then you can also configure the automation roles. Um, here's like the basic information 
that you would put in the title of this, you know, what the header description is, um, what you want the slug to be. So like the, the URL that shows up and then you've got additional information down here. Um, but if you were to go to configure form, um, this is where you can set up whatever fields you want, whatever based on what information you want to capture. Um, and yes, this would, I believe it goes out as, as an email. Um, you can also reorder the different sections that you have here. Uh, and then, so you can add in like as basically as many, as much, as many fields as you want, the name, your email address, you can ask them to upload a, a resume where they're located um, and what the, you know, the options are, if you want to include the city or just the region state, um, what roles are interested in, you can fully customize this, add, delete, change, whatever. Um, years of experience. And again, you can delete any of these fields if you're not interested and then add other ones that you might be interested in. Um, and then if you click view form, this is what it's going to look like. So our, uh, you know, hypothetical company name, game henge for this demo instance, this is what the sourcing form looks like based on the fields that you've put into it. Um, they, and then they would submit and then that information goes into the ATS and it is associated with their profile in the ATS as well. So that's fully searchable too. Um, hopefully that kind of... So is this also something that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I think there's a little bit of a delay. Is this also something that companies would put on their like careers page? Is like, we don't have a current, if you don't have a current role for this person, but like want to be part of the the talent pool or the candidate pool is that something that companies also do yeah for sure i think you know the the kind of uh traditional way that you see it is is just as you said it'll be like at the bottom of the careers page and it'll be something like don't see what you're looking for or um you know what we're going to be hiring in the future if you're interested in being considered for roles you know drop your email address in here and but then all, all you get is that like email address or maybe their name and their email address or something like that something like that this is a way where you can capture as much or as little information as you want to go into the ats and then what i have pulled up here is you can also configure the automation settings so what do you want to do with that information so let's say for example sourcing form submissions new sourcing forms what roles are you interested in? equals engineering um how many years of experience do you have five, um, you know, location, um, and then you can add in configure configuration. So like enable automation. I'm not the expert on how to set this up, but if you go to Ashby, you know, actually Ashby University, there's um, a video that shows how to do this. I don't know if we want to just like play it really quick so people can see, but um, Let me skip ahead a bit to go to the So is that basically saying that the form will be sent to anybody who are on the um, EST time zone in engineering? Yeah. And so basically that's where you set it up, the automations, if you want them to go into a specific project based on the information that they plug into that form. So that's... Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Um, 
Okay, great. So a couple more questions here. Aiden, I think we answered this one, um, but he was, he or she, excuse me, was asking, um, so with the form, is it a sent application to get prospects into the talent network? So you can either send it or you can have it on your website on like, let's say the careers page. So I think we answered mm -hmm. that one. Um, Melissa, so does Ashby have intelligence to dynamically track years of experience. If someone fills out a sourcing form out of college with let's say zero years of experience, but we want to see where they are five years later, will they still show as zero years of experience Experience, or will it have, have updated? That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure from a sourcing form perspective, but within the ATS. So let's say their profile where you have all their information that's living in the ATS. Um, if I go back to Jimmy, for example, if you search years of experience, it will pull that dynamically from uh, from their profile. So regardless of I'm not sure from a sourcing form perspective, whether that gets like automatically updated with time um, or whether it like kind of quote unquote starts the clock. Um, but if you do search like if I were to search right now, years of experience, and I plug in um, the the years that I'm looking for, and it happens to coincide with Jimmy's years of experience, then he would show up within those search results by pulling from his profile, whether it's a resume or LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I have another follow-up question. So let's say somebody's profile is not in Ashby yet but they fill out the sourcing form. So then they're in Ashby. Um, so it'll like basically create the person's profile. They don't have to already be in there as a candidate that has applied before or something like that. Yeah, it'll show up as, okay. um, it'll it'll populate their information. So like their name, their email address, whatever information is included in that sourcing form, you just won't see any job considerations over here on the left side. Or like, you know, okay. you, the, the communication okay. gets via email, then you'll see like form was submitted, um, but it won't have all this in for all this stuff uh, activity in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, another question we have from Karen. So does Ashby have stock photos slash AI images in the works to complement something like its sourcing template? something like a paperless post that's generic sourcing form to, uh, for touching base regularly with senior level talent. Like, are you saying Karen like branded, branded to the company or just I'm not sure exactly what that refers I to? I think that's a good question. I have a sense of what she's referring to, but I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's a good one that we can follow up with because I'm not sure what the answer is for that. Okay, great. Thank you. And Andre, I think it is. Yes, we will be sending out, Ashley will be sending out video to this. Uh, Karen has a question. Will the source auto populate? So I guess where it came from, is there a source sourcing form? Oh, for sourcing form. Um, what do you mean by source of the sourcing form? Well, it just says, will the source auto populate? So maybe not specifically for the sourcing form, but. Are we talking about attribution where we see right here? If we're talking about attribution. Yeah, attribution, yeah, source. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So let's say for example, um, you are in LinkedIn, you've got the Ashby Chrome extension pulled up on the right side of your screen. If they are already in Ashby, you'll see that there's like, they're in the, they're in the ATS, they were considered for a job, maybe they were archived or somebody sent an email, you'll see whatever the most recent activity is. And if you click the arrow to open it up, their profile in Ashby, you'll see whatever the previous source was. So if they're already in there, let's say they applied for a role six months ago and they were rejected and archived, you'll see that they applied will be the source. Um, it'll be like inbound, applied, or whatever that might be, right? Wherever they came from. Um, if they are not already in Ashby and in, if, oh, sorry, I think there might be a little lag or delay with the internet. Um, if they're not already in the system and you just see 
add to Ashby in the sourcing Chrome extension and you add them and then you consider for a role and then you click the arrow to open up their profile, you will see that it would say sourced Ashby Chrome extension and it would have your name. Now, the, uh, the caveat to that is if they were previously sourced with the Ashby Chrome extension by a different sourcer or recruiter before you, then it could populate that person's name and then you would just change it to yours. So I've had to do that a couple of times. For example, somebody who used to do some sourcing with Ashby, I think a couple of years ago or something, um, sometimes that person's name, or if they were referred by somebody a year ago, that person's name might, um, might show up here. And But you wanna make sure that it's attributed to you because you've just sourced this person for this new role that you're working on, then you would just change it to your own name. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then Bethany has a question, which I think kind of ties into that, because um, with reporting, you want to be looking at your activity as a sourcer or recruiter. Um, so are there sourcing reports that you typically use to show sourcing efforts that help you in your day to day? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if they're here in this demo instance, um, but you could pull up, for example, let me see what saved reports are here. Um, I haven't looked at it. Yeah, since this is a demo, it's not um, it's not like mine where it shows like my activity, but you can definitely build reports that show um, how many leads you've added for the week, um, what what roles there they've been added to. Um, you can look at you know your reach out, your response rates. Um, you can look at if you want to pull up you know different if it's like a team lead that wants to look at a dashboard across the team different recruiters and sourcers, what their activities have been based on that attribution. Um, you can definitely build reports for all of that and, and track it and it's, it's super helpful. Um, since I so personally source across like all roles, um, I typically like to see what the volume of different roles looks like at different times. So like if we open up a new role, it's gonna be higher volume for that role for maybe a couple of weeks. Um, and then if like another role is opened up, then you know, it just, it just kind of depends, but you can definitely track all of that um, within the system and it's super helpful. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Well, it looks like we're all up to speed on the questions that have come in. Um, so for anyone that maybe we weren't exactly able to answer your questions, we will do our best to follow up afterwards. Again, this recording will be sent out by Ashby um, in the upcoming few days. Um, just wanted to also give a last shout out and thank you to Liz for all of your expertise today. I know I learned a lot of new things. I was actually an Ashby user at the last startup that I worked at. Um, huge, huge fan. And it looks like there's been a ton of updates and upgrades since, since then in the AI function. Oh my gosh, that's like a lifesaver because I never can remember what fields are what. So love seeing that. Um, so a couple of quick follow-up items here. So if there's anyone on the call that is in Chicago, uh, Talent Collective and Ashby are going to be holding a launch event next week, actually, on Thursday night. Um, so we'd love to see anyone there that might be in the Chicago area. Um, for any TA executives in the room, uh, we have a virtual uh, workshop coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, that's going to be on running a lean team and how do you scale your team and scale the company with a lean team. So look out for that. That should be listed on Talent Collective's uh, LinkedIn page and our Luma page. Um, and then for those of you who don't know what Talent Collective is, we are a community for women in the talent acquisition space. If you're interested, I'd love to meet with you, uh, share more and learn more about you and any interests you have. Um, feel free to connect with me afterwards and feel free to connect with Liz as well. I'm sure she'd love to connect with anyone that was on the call today. Um, so really appreciate everyone's time here today. And um, thank you again to Liz and Ashby for co-hosting this webinar. Awesome. Thanks, Thank everyone. You.